Bhatia. I am an engineer by profession. I have a question that has been in my mind for quite a while now. The Noble Quran says, let there be no compulsion in religion. That's point number one. And point number two is that the punishment for a Muslim who wants to come out of Islam, God forbid, is death punishment. According to me, this signifies a virtual compulsion in the mind that this is the punishment which will be given to me, so hence I cannot do it. And this kind of, uh, I just need some clarification. I'm, I'm sure there is a clarification on this point. Well, that's a very good question. He hasn't given the reference first. He quoted the verse of the Quran from Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 256, which says, deen. There is no compulsion in religion. And that is part of the deen that you cannot force anyone, you cannot compel anyone with the point of the sword or the point of the gun. His next question is that if any Muslim leaves his religion and becomes a non-Muslim, becomes an apostate, then the penalty is death. So isn't this a sort of compulsion? Before I give the answer, I would like to mention that every country has its own law, its rules and regulation. And most of the countries, one of the highest punishments is for treason. For example, if a person is working in the army and if he leaks the important thing of the country, all the vital points and the information to the enemy, it is called as treason. Most of the countries, if anyone does treason, sells the important blueprints and documents of the country to the enemy, many of the countries, the death penalty, many of the countries have life imprisonment. So now if I tell that what kind of a country is this and where I'm compelled by the country not to do certain things, what is wrong is wrong. So here also, if a Muslim becomes a non-Muslim, it's only in the Islamic state of law, if that Muslim who becomes a murtad, and then propagates his new faith and deceives the people, that's the time this penalty is put. For example, if in a school, if I appoint a teacher, mathematics teacher, she is teaching 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, then tomorrow she teaches 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. So, but naturally I won't keep her in my school. The same way, the punishment for such a murtad in Islamic state, it is death. This will not be called as compulsion. It will be a person who has strayed away from the truth to the falsehood. But as far as making anyone accept Islam, no Muslim can force any non-Muslim to accept Islam at the point of the sword or at the point of the gun. What we have to do is we have to convey the message. If you like it, you accept it. If you don't like it, no problem. Our job is to convey the message. It's mentioned in the Quran, sorry, Gashia, chapter number 88, Fazakir Namanta Muzakir. Our job is to deliver the message. We have to deliver the message in the best way, with hikmah and with husna, with most beautiful preaching. Whether the other human being, non-Muslim, accept or not, it is not under our control. We cannot force anyone to accept Islam at the point of the sword, the point of the gun. But that what you're talking is a different case in a state of Islamic law. Like as I give an example, where a person working in army, if he sells the secrets of the country, then the penalty is somewhat similar. Hope that answers the question, brother. Right, okay, yeah. She asks, why is Allah referred to Allah? Why not any other name? 